Did you know that the library is full of dirt? Join us this summer as we get the dirt, discovering interesting reading trails. There will be trails about pets, music, dirt diggers, and more. Today's Get the Dirt is about dirt diggers. There will be all kinds of dirt diggers. Animals are dirt diggers. Machines are dirt diggers. Maybe you are a dirt digger too. Do you like to get dig in the dirt? How would you like to have a job where they paid you to dig in the dirt? Today's Get the Dirt, we're going to explore different types of dirt diggers, what they do, and try to find the simple machine at the level. But before we read some non-fiction books about dirt diggers, let's start with a book about a steam shovel. A steam shovel? What's a steam shovel? Now, it's not a shovel that's so hot that it sends steam off. This book is about a dirt digger from many years ago that used steam to make it run. This dirt digger had a big tank called a boiler that was full of water. This water was made by hot fire, and when the water got so hot it boiled, the steam from the boiler would make the engine run. In Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel, he shows that even though the new diesel engines that run on diesel fuel are the newest engines, he can still do the job. Does that sound like a bit like the diesel in the Thomas the Tank engine? Let's see what happens in Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. This book uses the same author and illustrator. Her name is Virginia Lee Burton. Do you remember another person who is both the author and illustrator? Who we read about and what pet should I get? Yes, that was Dr. Seuss. Today's author illustrator is going to be a dancer. When her father broke his leg, she stayed home to be with him. It was then that she discovered that writing children's books was what she really loved to do. I'm going to read my book. Mike Mulligan and His Steam Shovel. Story and Pictures by Virginia P. E. Burton. To Mike. Mike Mulligan had a steam shovel, a beautiful red steam shovel. Her name is Mary Ann. Mike Mulligan was very proud of Mary Ann. He said that she could dig as much in a day as a hundred men could dig in a week. But he had never been quite sure that this was true. Mike Mulligan and Marianne had been digging together for years and years. Mike Mulligan took such good care of Mar Marianne that she never grew up. He was Mike, Mike Mulligan and Marianne and some others who dug the great canals for the big boats to sail. It was Mike Mulligan and Marianne and some others who cut through the high mountains so trains could go through. It was Mike Mulligan, Mary Ann, and some others who lowered the hills and straightened the curbs to make long highways for the automobiles. It was Mike Mulligan, Mary Ann, and some others who smoothed out the ground and filled in the holes to make landing fields for the airplanes. It was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who did deep holes for the cellars of the tall skyscrapers in the big cities who used to stomp and watch them. Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann used to dig a little faster and a little be better the more people that stuck. The faster and better they dug. Some days they would keep as many as 37 trucks busy taking away the dirt they had dug. Then along came the new gasoline shovels and the electric shovels new diesel motor shovels. They took all the jobs away from the steam shovels. Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann were very sad. All the other steam shovels were being sold for junk and left out in the old gravel pits to rust and fall apart. Mike loved Mary Ann. He couldn't do that to her. He'd taken such good care of her that she could still dig as much as a day as a hundred men could dig in a week. At least he thought she could. When he wasn't quite sure, everywhere they went, the new gas shovels and the new electric shovels and the new diesel motor shovels had all the jobs. No one wanted Mike Mulligan and Marianne anymore. Then one day, Mike read a newspaper that the town of Pupperville was going to build a new town hall. We're going to dig for the cellar of that town hall, said Mike to Marianne. And off they started. They left the canals and the railroads, and the highways, and the airports, and the big cities, 
or no one wanted them anymore, and went way out into the country. They crawled along slowly, up the hills and down the hills, till they came to the little town of Popperville. Just when they got there, they found that the selectmen were just deciding who should dig the cellar for the new town. Mike Mulligan spoke to Harry B. Swamp, one of the selectmen. I heard that you were going to go to Newtown Hall. Mary and I, Mary Ann and I, will dig that cellar for you in just one day. What? said Henry B. Swamp. Dig a cellar in a day? That would take a hundred men at least a week. Sure, said Mike, but Mary Ann can dig as much in a day as a hundred men can dig in a week. Though he had never been quite sure that this was true, then he added, If we can't do it, you won't have to pay. Henry B. Swamp thought this would be an easy way to get the part part of the cellar dug for nothing, and he gave the job of digging the cellar of the Newtown Hall to Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. They started early the next morning, just as the sun was coming. Soon, a little boy came along. Do you think he will finish by sundown? He said to Mike Mulligan. Sure, said Mike. Do you stay and watch us? We will always work faster and better when someone is watching us. So the little boy stayed to watch. Then, Miss Gil Cuddy, Henry B. Swap, and the town const constable came over to see what was happening, and they stayed to watch. Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann took a little faster and a little, little better. This gave the little boy a good idea. He ran up and told the postman with the morning mail, the telegraph boy on his bicycle, the milkman with his cart and horse, the doctor on his way home, the farmer with his family coming into town for the day. They all stopped and stayed to watch. That made Mike Mulligan and Marianne dig a little faster and a little better. They finished the first corner, neat and square, but the set was getting higher. Clang, clang, clang. The fire department arrived. They had seen the smoke. They thought there was a fire. And the little boy said, why don't you stay and watch? So the fire department of Popperville stayed to watch Mike Mulligan and Marianne. And when they heard the fire engine, the children in the school across the street couldn't keep their eyes on their glasses. The teacher called a long recess, and the whole school came out to watch. That made Mary, Mike Mulligan and Marion dig still faster and still better. They finished the second corner, neat and square, but the sun was right up on the top of the sky. Now the, little, now the girl who answered the telephone called up the next towns of Bangerville and Bopperville and Kipperville and Copperville and told them what was happening in Popperville. All the people came over to see Mike Mulligan and his team shop to dig the cellar in just one day. The more people came, the faster Mike Mulligan and Marianne dug, but they would have to hurry. They were only halfway through, and the sun was beginning to go down. They finished the third corner, neat and square. Never had Mike Mulligan and Marianne so many people to watch them. Never had they dug so fast and so well. And they never had the sun seem to go down so fast. Hurry, Mike Mulligan, hurry, hurry, shouted the little boy. There's not much more time. Dirt was flying everywhere. Smoke and steam were so thick that people could hardly see anything. But listen, bang, bang, crash, slam, louder, louder, faster, and faster. And suddenly it was quiet. Slowly the dirt settled down, the smoke and steam cleared away, and there was the cellar, all finished. Four corners, neat and square. Four, four walls straight down. Mike Mulligan and Marianne at the bottom. And the sun was just going down behind the hill. Hooray, shouted the people. Hooray for Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. They have dug the cellar in just one day. Suddenly the little boy cried, How are you going to get out? That's right, cried Miss Gilguddy to Henry B. Swap. How is he going to get a steam shovel out? Henry B. Swap did an answer, but he smiled in a rather mean way. Then everybody said, how are you go they going to get out? Hi, Mike Mulligan. How are you going to get out? How are you going to get your steam shovel out? Mike Mulligan looked around at the four square walls, the four square corners. He said, we've dug so fast and we've dug so well that we've quite forgotten to leave a way out. Nothing like this had ever happened to Mike Mulligan and Marianne before, so they didn't know what to do. Nothing like this had ever happened before in Popperville. Everybody started talking at once, and everybody had a different idea. Everybody thought that his idea was the best. They talked, and they talked, and they argued, and they fought. 
until they're all worn out. And still, no one knew how to get Mike Mulligan from Marianne out of the cellar. Yet, then Henry B. Swap said, The job isn't finished because Marianne is now the sheller, so Mike Mulligan won't get paid. So he smiled again in a rather mean way. Now the little boy who had been keeping very quiet had another good idea. He said, Why couldn't we leave Marianne in the cellar and build the new town hall above her? Let her be the furnace for the new town hall, and let Mike Mulligan be the janitor. Then you wouldn't have to buy a new furnace, and, you, and we could pay Mike Mulligan for digging the cellar in just one day. Why not, said Henry B. Swap, and smiled in a way that was not quite so mean. Why not, said Miss Gilligutty. Why not, said the town constable. So they found a ladder and climbed down into the cellar to ask Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. Why not, said Mike Mulligan. So it's decided, and everybody was happy. They built the new town hall right over Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann was finished before winter. Every day, the little boy goes over to see Mike Mulligan and Marianne, and Miss Gilgutty takes him. Nice hot uh, apple pies. As for Henry B. Swap, he spends most of the time in the cellar of the Newton Hall, listening to the stories that Mike Mulligan has to tell, and smiling in a way that isn't mean at all. Now when you go to Popperville, be sure to go down into the cellar of the Newtown Hall. There I will be, to Mike Mulligan and Marianne, Mike in his rocking chair smoking his pipe, Marianne beside him, warming up all the meetings in the new town hall. If you liked this book, be sure to check out more by Virginia Lee Burton. Her books can be found in the easy section under B for Burton. I found so many books on dirt diggers that it was hard to choose which one to read. Be sure to get the dirt on real life dirt diggers. Those are called nonfiction books at your local library in the two, 629 section. If you want to get the dirt through storybooks about dirt diggers, be sure to look at the fiction section of the library by the author's last name. If you find this information on the spine of each of your library books. I'm going to read Barney the Backhoe and the Big City Dig. And this is the backhoe that we have. Now this book is by Susan Knopf, so that's the person that wrote the words. The person that drew the pictures is Zary Zitterman. Look everyone, Barney Bacco said to his friends, I have big news. There's an important job for us to do in the city. Let's go help build a skyscraper. That sounds great, said Eddie Esc Excavator. Let's go right now. But we have to finish this playground first, said Grady Grader. Why don't you go ahead, Barney? Luke Loader suggested. You're so fast, you can do two things at once. We'll finish the playground, and then meet you at the big city dig. Danny Dozer added. Barney zoomed down the road to the city. He couldn't wait to get to the big dig. Barney passed a pipe yard, a place where the pipes are stored. Oh no, some of the pipes had rolled onto the road. I can help, Barney thought. First he lifted the bigger pipes with his loader shovel, then he scooped up the smallest pipes with his backhoe bucket. Barney continued down the road. Soon he reached the big city. He looked up at the tall buildings. Oh no, a builder was waving his arms for help. The man's letters had fallen to the ground. He couldn't get up or down to finish his job. I can help, Barney thought. He lifted the letters into place. Now the builder can finish his job. I have had a very busy day, and I haven't even come to the big dig yet. But then he stopped. Oh no, there was a great big hole in the middle of the road. Barney saw a truck carrying lots of glass windows. If the truck had tried to drive over that hole, the windows would break. I can help, Barney thought. He scooped up some gravel and filled in the hole. Now the truck can get through. Then Barney zoomed off to the big city dig. Finally, Barney arrived at the construction site. His friends were already there. They were hard at work. I've had a busy day, Barney said. First, I stacked pipe, pipes. Then I lifted two small ladders. And finally, I filled in a giant hole in the road. Barney looked at the big dig. The work was almost finished. But it didn't help you very much on the big city dig, he said to his friend sadly. Yes, you did, said Eddie Excavator. 
You helped us by picking up the pipe in the pipe yard, and here they are. Barney dug a long hole, and Eddie placed the pipes into the hole. Next, Barney lifted some beams up to the builder. You also helped us by picking up the ladder so the builder could get to his next job, right here. And he helped us by filling in the hole in the road so the truck with the windows could get past, and here they are. Barney and Luke carried the windows so very carefully so they wouldn't break. Soon the new buildings were finished. The mayor had come to celebrate. Everyone cheered for Barney back home and his friends. We did it, Barney said to his friends. Thanks for helping with the big city dig. We couldn't have done it without you, Barney, said Danny Dozer. Doze, Danny Dozer. Now if you look at the bulldozer, there's a very heavy blade that he uses to push things, and his tires have um, ridges to help him grip the ground. The next book I'm going to read is about another bulldozer. Except this one is a non-fiction book. So this is a, so the things in this book is true. Time to push. Bulldozers are strong machines. They push the dirt. They knock down trees. A bull bulldozer has a big blade in the front. It has special wheels. Can you guys find the blade on the bulldozer? The wheels are called crawl crawler tracks. Crawler tracks are strong. They help bulldozers go over bumpy ground. Some boulders, bulldozers have a ripper. It is on the back. A ripper can break concrete. Bulldozer, bulldozers can be big or small. Some bulldozers can use a bucket. The bucket can carry rocks. A bulldozer makes the ground flat, then other machines can work there. All done pushing. And this book, because it's a nonfiction book, instead of them drawing pictures, they took um, photographs instead. This book is going to have lots and lots of different trucks. There's the bulldozer. He has the track and headlights, steering control. And there's an escalator. Which I, you don't have one of those. But there's a bucket. Which other which other um machine has a bucket? You see? And then there's the telehander. A skid steer loader. I think you think that this this looks like it. It's for scooping stuff. A pizza. A motor grader. A wheel loader. A backhoe loader and a material handler. And finally, the dump truck. These complex machines are made of many simple machines, but the simple machine we are looking for today is the lever. You see on this one, the lever is the part that helps push it up. You can see this in Levers in My Maker Space by Tim Miller. That all levers have a board of some sort and a furculum. See, here's the board, here's the furculum. And there's the load. The load is the part of, the load is the thing that you're trying to move. You can get the dirt on several machines in the 621 section of your local library. Do you want to see a really fun lever? I have a spoon for a board, a, my thumb as a curriculum, and ball as for the load. 
Before I read one last story about a dirt digger, if you want to learn to build levers out of Legos, or learn to draw dirt diggers, get the dirt in the 688 and 743 sections of the library. Here are two books that, from those sections that you could use. This book that I'm going to, call, going to read is called Are You My Mother? by P.D. Eastman. Are You My Mother? This is another one. The same person wrote the words and drew the pictures. A mother bird sat on her egg. The egg jumped. Oh no, said the mother bird. My baby will be here. He will want to eat. I must get something for my baby bird to eat. I will be back. So away she went. The egg jumped. It jumped and jumped and jumped. Up came the baby bird. Where is my mother? He said. He looked for her. He looked up. He did not see her. He looked down. He did not see her. I will go out and look for her. He said. So away he went. Down out of the tree, he went. Down, 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 down. It was a long way down. The baby bird could not fly. He could not fly, but he could walk. Now I will go and find my mother, he said. He did not know what his mother looked like. He went right by her. He did not see her. He came to a kitten. Are you my mother? He said to the kitten. The kitten just looked and looked. He did not say a thing. It was not his mother, so he went on. Then he came to a hen. Are you my mother? He said to the hen. No, said the hen. And the kitten was not his mother. And the hen was not his mother. So the baby bird went on. I have to find my mother. But where? Where is she? Where could she be? Then he came to a dog. Are you my mother? He said to the dog. I am not your mother. I am a dog, said the dog. The kitten was not his mother, the hen was not his mother, the dog was not his mother, so the baby bird went on. Now he came to a cow. Are you my mother? he said to the cow. How can I be your mother? said the cow. I am a cow. The kitten and the hen were not his mother, the dog and the cow were not his mother. Did he have a mother? I did have a mother, said the baby bird. I know I did. I have to find her. I will. I will. Now the baby bird did not walk. He ran. Then he saw a car. Could that old thing be his mother? No, it could not. The baby bird did not stop. He ran on and on. Now he looked way, way down. He saw a boat. There she is, said the baby bird. He called to the boat. The boat did not stop. The boat went on. Then he looked way, way up. He saw a big plane. Here I am, Mother, he called out. The plane did not stop. The plane went on. Just then the baby bird saw a big thing. It must be his mother. There she is. There is my mother. He ran up to it. Mother, Mother, here I am, Mother, he said to the big thing. But the big thing said, Snor, you are not my mother, said the baby bird. You are a snort. I have to get out of here. But the baby bird could not get away. The snort went up. It went way, way up and way, way up went the baby bird. But now, where was the snort going? Oh no, where is the snort going to do to me? Get me out of here. Just then, the snort came to a stop. Where am I? said the baby bird. I want to go home. I want my mother. Then something happened. The snort put that baby bird back into the tree. The baby bird was home. Then, just then came the mother bird back, came back to the tree. Do you know who I am? She said to her baby. Yes, I know who you are, said the baby bird. You are not a kitten. You are not a hen. You are not a dog. You are not a cow. You are not a boat, nor a plane, or a snort. You are a bird, and you are my mother.
This book is from my house, but where do you think it might be found in the library? Yes, in the fiction section under E for Eastman because it's Cat in the Hat be beginner book. It may be found with others like it. Get the Dirt from your librarian. Thanks for watching Get the Dirt. Tomorrow on Get the Dirt, we'll be doing a segment on musical instruments. Be sure to tune in. Then be sure to tune in next week for another segment of Digging Deeper, the theme of this summer's reading, library reading program. Have a great day and be sure to get the dirt at your local library.